RPA Today Show, hosted by Rob Howes and Wilton Rogers. The show that brings you the latest insights on RPA, robotic process automation, and how it's impacting every industry, as well as interviews with companies that are currently winning big with this technology. You'll also hear from other industry leaders and experts who will be sharing some of their success secrets to help you become more productive and to grow your business. This show is brought to you by Simply Automate, where we help you get more done in less time and more ease for your mind with strategic business automation. Learn more at www.simplyautomateinc.com and please follow us on LinkedIn. If anything in this show resonates with you, please let us know by leaving a review. The RPA Today Show, where you just might learn something you didn't know. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the RPA Today Show. I'm your host, Rob Howes. I got my co-host, Wilton Rogers, over there somewhere in the virtual world, but we are all connected. And this Mm. is what we're talking about, man. We're talking about getting people connected to technology that is going to allow them to get things done better, faster, smarter, easier. They got smartphones, but why not have smart businesses, huh? That's right. That's right. (laughs) And 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 what? Go ahead. Go ahead, man. And that comes, man. I mean, there's the the smart businesses and the smart people are coming out of the woodworks now. So, absolutely, we have one on, on today's show. I was gonna say, man, we have one of the smartest here. Okay, one one uh-huh. of the leaders in in this space, my man Dimitri Karpov. He is uh, he's just doing phenomenal things uh, with Electronics. He's the founder of Electronics Robotics, citizen automation evangelist, entrepreneur, and corporate executive. And you know, he's a former physicist. The guy just has a lot of intelligence, but he's passionate about helping people use technology better and helping businesses move smoother and faster, which allows them to stay in business. And so he's been a great, Electronics has been a great partner of ours. Um, we, we, we would not have been able to serve at the capacity that we've been able to serve if it wasn't for the great technology of Electronics and the leadership of Dimitri. So Dimitri, man, welcome to the RPA Today Show, my friend. Hi, Rob. Hi, Wilton. It's a big pleasure, as always, to be your guest. Well, the pleasure is ours, man. The pleasure is ours from the moment we met and we, we talked and you, you shared some of the technology and what you were doing and what it was doing. And let's face it, we're in the business of helping businesses do better business, right? And the way you do that, ladies and gentlemen, is automate the mundane, automate the repetitive. That way you can get a nice analysis on what you've automated and then you can revitalize it. Am I right or am I right, guys? You're right. You're right. You're right. Hey, you know, by the way, I'm going to share this with you. I was on a um, on a panel last week or the week before, and they started talking about AI, and this company is doing, and they're doing very, very well in AI. And he goes, if it wasn't for RPA, we wouldn't be where we are with AI right now. Wow. And and I said, what do you mean by that? He said, we were able to figure it out. He goes, this is when RPA was just, you know, this is four or five years ago. It wasn't as big as it is as it's getting now. And he says, we just figured out ways to automate things that we were doing over and over again. It's like, you know what, let's automate this. Let's automate this so we can focus more time and energy into doing this. And when you realize all the stuff that you can automate, and then not only do you, you physically and mentally forget about that completely, and you focus your time and energy on things that, that you can, that you're really passionate about, like we're passionate about AI, we were able to really grow our business tenfold because we didn't have to put our time and energy and resources to these areas. And he goes, and our company has grown tenfold, I don't know about tenfold, but he goes, our company has grown a lot since then, and we've been able to hire more people because of it. Mm. And I thought that was very interesting because you don't hear a lot of stories like that because not a lot of people that are part of RPA have had it for a long time. This company has had it for five, six years, seven years, whatever it is. Right. And you see what happens five, six years later, what they've done because of it. Yep. Yep. No. That's big. So, yeah. Anyway, you want to share that story with you guys? Yeah, that's, a, that's a great, that's a great story. That's a great story. And, and Dimitri, I know you have some stories, man. I know, you know, as a matter of fact, that's one of the questions, you know, that I love to ask every guest on this show, you know, what problems do you solve? You know, then of course the follow up one is going to be, you know, what's the biggest problem you solve to date? Yeah, that's a, that's a good segue into like what you do and, and how you do it. But first, man, I want you to just kind of share, you know, who you who you are. And I, I kind of gave a quick intro, who you are, what you do, and then you can go into what problems you solve. 
Sure. So as you said before, that I'm a former scientist. I came to the States 13 years ago to do my PhD in physics, uh, but happened to be turned into entrepreneur thanks to education by Intel. And um, my current mission and what I'm in a journey I'm embarked for mostly 10 years is innovation and technologies that shape the future of work, specifically those technologies that let us be more human, which means do more value add tasks than machines can do. And around, what, seven years ago, I became um, an RPA evangelist and RPA professional, and RPA stands for automation in the first place. Automation is a gold because automation gives us time. Time is a new gold. It's up to us how to use this time, but what enables us to, to get it is our skills and the tools we use. And the tools we use become more connected over time. So there's no need for us to be intermediate between the tools, between to be intermediate of the data between the tools. Mm -hmm. So I worked at Ernst Young, where I was one of the innovation leaders and led their corporate accelerator in Palo Alto. And three years ago, we started with a group of friends, a company called Electronique, uh, with the mission to bring these automation technologies outside of corporate enterprise walls to those who really needed the most mm -hmm. entrepreneurs mm -hmm. in small business in mid-market, in the companies that want to get competitive edge over their big corporate enterprise brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And so far, we were successful because of partners like you who take this technology and build own business by automating others' routine. We found that working with managed service providers is the right way to serve the market, is mm -hmm. the only one way to serve uh, the market that otherwise just faces prohibitive costs of automation. Mm. And here we are today. When we started this journey three years ago, no one imagined that there will be shortage on the US labor market. And this is really amazes me. According to research by Bridgestone Group, half of the companies in the States currently have positions they cannot fill in. That's unprecedented times. Still, like I think the last time that was around 1970s. There was very prosperous economic growth after that. Mm -hmm. So what we expect now is that more and more businesses of all sizes will be forced to start their automation journey mm. because people who want to work for them don't want to do routine. They want exactly. to do more high value add tasks. And how can you solve that otherwise than restructuring your business and maybe hiring someone for 10 hours instead of eight? Yeah. Along all the way to do things. Mm. The new way is to get the tools to connect them together and to let people do that work that required 10 hours in four hours in six hours. Yes. Yeah. Robotics is in the rise, including physical robotics. In the first nine months of this year, in US only, um, companies that do physical robotics and industrial automation sold more units than the whole 2020. In 2020, as you've heard, was a big boom in this market. So mm. in the first nine months, which means at least 25% growth of the market, or 30% growth, sorry. Mm. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, I mean, people are starting to wake up a little bit around here. Huh. I remember around a year ago, I've called you when you were on a journey uh, to bring some charity goods to, uh, to a lady who lives pretty long, long drive uh, from the place you live. And I think we talked about this negative perception of automation that it replaces people, it replaces jobs. Mm -hmm. It happens quite opposite, actually completely quite opposite. Machines and robots and software tools like RPA, mm -hmm. they come not to take someone's job, but they take to replace where there is no one to do the job. Mm. And there's a limited supply of talent. Right. Because right. we all want to do more high value add tasks. I love that. I love that. More high value tasks. And I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people are very apprehensive when they think about technology and robots and like, oh the robots are coming to take our jobs and destroy us. But actually <laughs> They're coming to relieve your stress and keep you away from doing the mundane, repetitive work. Actually, they're here to help you maybe have a four hour work day instead of a 10, as you said. I love it, man. I love it. People need to get educated about that. You know what I mean, Wilton? I do. I think it, I think it, you need to be more educated. The smaller the business is, the harder it is to for them to wrap their head around what we're talking about. Um, the smaller, but, you the know, smaller the business? What I found, smaller the business, yeah. The smaller yeah. the business, is, you know, it, it just, they, they can't really comprehend a lot of what we're what we're saying, and I think that's where I think I was on a on a show not too long, a couple of weeks ago, and they said, you know, how did you guys really 
hit the market here in the small market and be able to have people start automating processes on the, on, you know, from small businesses. And I told them, I said, we had already built this plan when we were working with Automation Anywhere and UiPath and all these big companies in the enterprise world. There was already a, a model built to be able to cater to the small, medium-sized businesses. We said, we already had the plan built. We just didn't have the software. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> we were lucky to meet each other this, that, that, that year. So uh, you are an innovator. I hear from many many service providers about their, uh, their goals of serving their existing customer base in small business or entering this market from, from wherever they are. And they still have many, um, let's say, unknown ahead of them. And that unknown requires a leap of faith, which means you truly believe that there is a demand. You see that. Mm -hmm. went through that leap of faith in 2020 and 2019. And yeah. now you are one of the, I think, best managed service providers I know who is able to serve um, small businesses. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of it absolutely has to do with the partnership because that was the missing link, right? And, mm -hmm. and when you, when you see the trend of the RPA trend, you see it, it where it is, where it was coming out. And I saw that coming fast. Like it's rolling downhill big time in the SME and SMB world. There was just, there was nobody like Electronique out there yet, right? At that time. But preparation allowed us to, because obviously I knew there was someone behind there trying to prepare for that on that end. It's like, it's only smart, smart enough for someone to build it on the enterprise end. They're smart enough to, to think, this building for the smaller market where there's more business. So I kind of put that together. And then when you guys came out, it was just like, okay, this is perfect. And we've seen a lot of other players come out. You know, obviously there's some other uh, new guys jumping in the, in the game. I know what makes you guys different, but what do you think makes you different from, because, you know, there, there's a, be, between Automation Anywhere and UiPath, I mean, there's, there's so many, I mean, and you guys, so many things that, you'd be surprised that you guys we can do with you you guys that it almost takes them completely out of the picture like completely out of for what a client needs every one of our clients need them there's no reason why we have to go with anybody else mm -hmm. at all right mm -hmm. so you know but compared to other client other vendors coming into the game now what makes you think you, what makes you differ from the guys trying to be the next electronique I think it's our commitment to serving the best interest of managed service providers or their business. And essentially because their business is to serve their clients in the best way. That's about caring about the end user of automation. Hmm. And it comes to the partnership they built with companies like yours and others. It pretty much allows you to bring this technology to your clients hmm. in a way that's comfortable for everyone, whether that's implementation fees or subscription when it comes to the skill set of developers or skill set of users of automation. We are very MSP centric because we understand that that's the only one way to serve the market. Other vendors, they still they, they see this segment as some addition to what they do in enterprise. Yeah. That's their strategy. It's great strategy for many of these companies. Their, their profits are soaring from largest companies that really find alternative in offshoring and outsourcing of labor to automating that with bots. For us, our success is success of our managed service providers. Mm -hmm. Their success is their revenue. Their mm -hmm. revenue is the value they bring to their clients. So it comes to very simple mm -hmm. understanding of how the value is created in automation world, yeah. and whom we should be serving in order for this model to work. That's good. That's good, Dimitri. Tell, tell, tell me this. Um, w w give me a, one of the best use cases you can think of right now that you guys have, have seen that you've actually done. The best use case, the best type of testimony I want to hear, so share with the people who want to kind of get an understanding of how people are actually winning with this technology. Can you share one with us? The best testimonial for us as, as we are centric on managed service providers is when entrepreneurs like you are able to say that you build the business, mm -hmm. that you now created jobs to automate inefficiencies in the world, that your business is growing, that you can hire better and better talent, mm -hmm. that you can serve more and more clients, that your client's base is growing. That's the most fascinating for us. When yeah. it comes to the use cases on, on the end user side, what our partners automate for them, mm -hmm. 
usually these are the processes that um, a business process owner or IT business IT or process owner are a bit shameful. The reason that usually involves a lot of repetitive data entry. Mm-hmm. And it's something you wouldn't be sharing with your colleagues saying that, oh, I'm keying the data in web form for four hours a day or something like this. Too, mm-hmm. that, that, that's the reality of many companies. I would say when it comes to spreadsheets, there's really not so many things you should do with spreadsheets. If you want to quickly estimate, calculate something, go to spreadsheets, they're useful. Mm-hmm. Don't make spreadsheet part of any business process. And that's usually where automation is very helpful. Mm-hmm. That was a great way to structure data. And usually it means that you use it as an intermediate between other tools, your client data and data entry in system of record, mm-hmm. Excel spreadsheet in between, connecting payroll system with point of sale, a big issue for many, many small businesses. And it's actually, it's one of the most fascinating cases I know. There are a couple of software ecosystems that do points of sale and payroll software. And many businesses, they use tools from different systems that don't talk to each other. Mm. Why they do it? Because let's say the payroll system has amazing templates for employee agreement. So they buy their payroll system, not because of the connectivity or IT features of that, but because of ease of use to onboard new employees. They have all standard contracts in place. Don't need to hire any legal uh, professionals to help, which a lot of small business owners admire. We actually started to think the same way about our own business and what we can bring as standard tools to start and to grow. And that's where a lot of our innovation is heading right now. Mm, That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. And with with, with the the errors of businesses that we've been able to touch now because of it, we've been able to see the growth within their own organization adapt or adopt, I should say, RPA a lot faster. Hmm. We've been able to let them see, okay, now I know how it works. You know, um, can this I have, you know, my bank reconciliation. Can this, let me map this out for you? And and it and it almost becomes like a rhythm. And what we're seeing with the small businesses now is that medium sized are doing okay as well, but the small ones are where because they they're so um shorthanded that we're seeing them try to find all those areas of the business that they can automate. Yep. And it's and we didn't see that at first, like, you know, the the small business enterprise were still pretty pretty comfortable there. But the small businesses, what we've seen is that they do one after another, one after another, one after another. Because once they understand it, they see the value, the immediate value of it. And right. that's the message that we're sort of trying to get out because we love working with SMEs and large enterprises. We're very thankful for that business. But the small businesses, when you can, you know, we have one guy that's just like on the eighth or ninth process as he's pumping them out and he's sending us videos and one after another, one after another. And we love it because he there's a he gets it now and there's a process built behind it. And so to see small businesses take advantage of it and see how fast they can take advantage of it. Yeah. Um, it, it's pretty impressive. And that's definitely because of you guys. And I, and I do want to say about the, the partnership, what what you guys have done, and you, I mean, you said that you know you really, you know, you strive to make sure that your your um, partners like us are successful, and we're doing being able to do what we do and hire and so forth and so on. And the partnerships that you guys have been able to help us create. I mean, we're working on projects that have your software, but they need a partner because their IT team is like, you know, we're not going to hire our IT team to do this. We want someone else outsourced to do this. And you turn them over to us, and now these projects are turning into potential multi, you know, 10, 15, 20, 100 processes into, you know, so it can turn into something really big just because of a conversation and, and that partnership that we have. So everything that you're saying about that, what you guys do for your MSPs and everybody else is is, is dang true, man. So yeah. And 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 I think that's one of the reasons that sort of I won't say, you know put us away from other vendors but even the other vendors that are trying to keep up like you that are trying to do what you guys do they still don't get it because we do we still do our research because we have to it's like why yeah. do our research because we want to let them know no you know but regardless it's like we know it's like okay now there's a limitation there no there's a limitation there oh you're not exposing that you're not doing that so we see that you guys are wide open with everything mm-hmm. wide open with everything and that's been that's been great from the beginning 
We're sitting here with Dimitri Karpov, the founder of Electronics Robotics, and we're talking about what the heck is happening in the 21st century in regards to RPA, Robotic Process Automation, and how businesses can get this into their business. And Dimitri and his amazing team have found a way to not just help the end user that we help, but he can help the user who is us. So he's helping us help them, help us help them. I think that's something, there's something inside of that. Help people help people. I don't know, that seems to be a, a nice working model. Dimitri, tell me, man, what, what some, some innovative things you guys are working on now? Um, first, let me just quick comment on what you just said. I think that automation is more human business than, than other outsiders in the industry assume. Mm -hmm. And it's so great when you're able to scale inside clients by showing them the real benefits in the, on their processes. Yes. It's like Disneyland or Universals of the world. You can talk about them and pitch them to your kids or to your friends for a while, but until you come there and you see what, what's in real life, you wouldn't be able to relate. You wouldn't be able to buy an idea of going there pretty often. Right. Um, we're having our winter release soon. Um, that's a big uh, step to us on the journey that we continued focusing on MSP success. And uh, pretty much how we, how we build our product roadmap. We talk to our partners and to our prospects to understand what are their business needs. And they change. As businesses grow, as you have more clients, the product requirements change. For instance, orchestration. That's a technology that connects your automations together, integrates them in your IT ecosystem. Now, many of our partners have big number of users using the tools and the user credential management becomes an issue. A role-based access is required. We introduce a new token system that essentially disconnects a bot from specific employee. Now you will manage bots in a different way that you managed before because they will not be associated with corporate emails. That actually was a very interesting issue when I worked back in a in, in, in large company. Mm. We lost track of how many employees the company has because uh, for each employee we need to create, for each bot we need to create a real email address at corporate domain. And at a certain moment of time, like historically one email means one employee. And in our case, we had 5,000 bots or something like this. So we lost track of that. Mm. Um, that wasn't the problem I wanted to focus when we started Electronic. But now when we see the time of our partners, they need to run hundreds of bots a time and they need to manage credentials and the employees come and go over their clients. So that's a big part of us. Yeah. Uh, orchestration comes on premise for many companies that operate in legacy IT infrastructure mm. or who, they, who have high, let's say, security, environment, and compliance requirements. That was an instrumental thing to do. Oh. More important, what you would see there will be a lead distribution system. So we automate in the process of connecting demand and supply in the regions we operate. Okay. We, we receive a lot of organic requests to automate from, from businesses of all sizes. And as you know, we distribute them to partners. It was a manual process and actually didn't allow you to select what kind of company or prospect you want to work with. We're going to automate it and all our partners will have access to partner portal where they'll be able to pick up, I want to, to get in touch with this company or I want to get in touch with these companies mm -hmm. and they will be feed there. A very, very important feature that comes to our winter release will be bot protection. That's something very hard to understand when you don't work in the industry, but a lot of clients, specifically in small companies in the mid market, they prefer not to pay upfront for automation, but they prefer to have it as a subscription, as a service. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way for some of our partners to grow, to grow their recurring revenue. Um, and it's comfortable for many clients. But it was always a question, how can a partner take a lot of risks of building something, investing their employees' time, and then let's say have a client um, leaving them with their intellectual property. So we decided to, to introduce the new feature that will let our partners protect their intellectual property so yeah. they can ship these bots to clients without being worrying that this bot can be copying, replicated, modified without partner success, but because it will be their intellectual property. So good. Okay. Due to this comfortable way of uh, pretty much spreading the client, client costs across the time and really focus on the value-based pricing. Mm. By the way, that's a question I hear the most from our partners. How do I price automation for, yeah. for our clients? Yes. And I like this lesson from actually uh, one entrepreneur I met from Texas this summer who said that that's very simple. Like pricing of automation is not 
rocket science. You just need to understand how much does it cost for business to run the process now and how much it will be in the future when the job will be split between bots and humans. Mm -hmm. Say there is some number. Then it's up to you and the business owner to decide what portion of that automation mm -hmm. will be given to the partner as a reward for them investing in building this automation. Right. And it's always less than 100%, right? You wouldn't charge someone more than they paid before. Right. What the reasonable number? That depends on the relationship, on the pain, on the value, on how big is this process. Mm -hmm. so let's say 50-50 is a good start to split. Sounds very fair. And that depends, of course, on where the partner and their client are in the business relationships. Right. But that's not the rocket science. Yeah. The whole world is moving to kind of subscription economy. The only one way to price it is value. It's value. Value. For client. Value. You hit it on the head, man. That's, it's, it's, it's not rocket scientific, man. Yeah, you're right. It's just, uh, we, we have an ROI calculator. So folks, when they fill out a questionnaire and they and they fill out the information and write down their process, but by the end of it, they know how much they're going to be saving year one, year two, year three, you know, and value. What is the value going to be? That's awesome. That's awesome. And for those of you who are watching this video in RPA community and developer community, for you developers, the most innovation comes with new features, new tools. And what's cool about the white theme, you know, Electronique was very stick to dark theme. That was our style. We believe that there should be some experience of working with dark, innovatively looking tool for a while. But now many developers spend days, like 10 hours a day in a tool. Dark theme is sometimes hard for us when you work for that long. So wait for the white theme to appear. That's good. That's good, man. <laughs> I love it. Do, do Just talking about um, electronic itself. Well, I think we 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 touched on a lot of points of work. You know what RPA is, what you guys are doing. Um, what do you guys see yourself as? Like the, what do you guys see yourself compared to the other vendor, your competition? What do you, what are your goals there? Our goal is to best to be the best partner for managed service providers in starting and growing their automation business. And mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of unmet demand for automation as a service, for automation services. Mm -hmm. We want to bring more and more entrepreneurs and companies to this space uh, to help them when it comes to technology, when it comes to marketing, when it comes to sales, yeah. when it comes to hiring. We think that these are very, very important topics for uh, for entrepreneurs like you when you think about partnerships. We want to be not a software vendor. We want to be a software partner for you. Mm. Mm. That's good. That's good. You guys, are, you guys are definitely doing that, man. And I think that that is something. It's almost taking allowing people to understand the capabilities on a different, whole different level. And we, we have businesses like yours to be able to do that and, and uh, being able to touch the area where other people can't with the support, knowledge and education that you need to sort of move forward and the connections uh, um, to move forward so you could take full advantage of RPA um, without being without letting it sit on the de on the shelf and collect dust is important. And you guys have nailed that, man. You guys have really nailed that. So, you know, yeah. we, so we enjoy being a part of it with you guys for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank Dimitri, you. Dimitri, tell me, tell me this. We got a last couple of questions here coming in for a landing, okay? Here is a question. What would you say to somebody who's on the fence about using RPA? Because, you know, we got a lot of apprehension. Folks are unsure. What would you say to somebody who's on the fence about using RPA? Um, getting the benefits of RPA is easier than it was historically. Because of electronic and some of our new competition, there is no need for you as a business owner to buy any software. You need just to work with a partner who is empowered to deliver to you automation as a service. That makes the price point much more affordable for majority of the market. And um, it's mm -hmm. pretty much priced on the value it creates for you. So there's really low chance to get into a uh, uh, low ROI or no ROI uh, route. Mm -hmm. We de-risked a lot of it for you. Us as a vendor, you as a partner community, we took a lot of risks off the table. Mm. So don't repeat, automate. I love that. Don't repeat, automate. I saw that on your tag too. 
That's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and, there, and, and there's a sign for you. Whenever you, anything you are repeating, there is your sign for automation in case you were trying to find a way in, guys. Nope. You, Dimitri, get, get, give us your best piece of business advice. So let's say you want to start a business. You're an entrepreneur and you want to start a business. It could be a restaurant, could be anything, online store, something where you create value for others. Think about starting a business in a different way. Mm -hmm. Historically, thought about what kind of roles do I need to have? Yeah. Okay, I need to have this type of role, this type of role, this type of role. Okay, what kind of tools I need to acquire for, for these roles to connect them together? Now I think it should be a new way. Think about what kind of value I want to create for my customers, mm. whether it's food in a restaurant or it's drugs in a drugstore. What tools do I have to serve this demand? Yeah. How can I connect these tools to work together? And now when you think about this first, you create roles to operate these tools in the most efficient way, to complement them with value add tasks, whatever these tasks are, the customer yeah. service, interacting with customers, um, analytics. In this case, your employees will be empowered to do much more than they can do in the business next door to you. Yeah. Yeah. They will be happier, you will pay them more, they will work less hours, hmm. and your company will have much better culture. Wow. Yeah. That's the competitive edge of the 21st century. That's amazing. That's where we want to be. Where that's where we want to see small business owners. That's yeah. where we want to see mid-sized businesses. We don't want to see large corporate conglomerates empowered by millions of bots taking your business. No. Right. You need to compete for people in the 21st century. Automation is the way to compete for the best talent for your business, whatever you do. Mm. Well said, man. I dropped, yes. I would drop my mic, but I just bought it. So I got, I got to keep this here. <laughs> Will, what you got, man? Final words. <laughs> man, I mean, you, you pretty much covered everything that we want to cover. You know, I think um, people that need to reach out to you, um, first of all, you know, before you give out where they can reach out to you, I would say that you don't need a whole lot of people or businesses that are very, I will not say a whole lot that aren't ethical. I guess that's, that's, that's a misuse of the word, but that, stick by what they say they're going to do and and they stick not only what they say they're going to do for you but also what they say they're going to do as a company as a vision the vision and being able to be part of this last we've been, a, we've been part of this for over a year already it's been over a year yep. um so you know being able to see the journey that you guys have seen you guys do over this last year um and the whole process being able to Stay true to who who you say you guys are, with all the changes you have to make. Um, it's been it's been really cool to be on that journey, man. So you know, really appreciate the work that you guys do and be part of that. And you know, if people want to be part of this amazing ecosystem that you built, and I want to be part, you know, of something that we're part of. How can the, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you guys? Um. It's our website. That's where a lot of contact information and a lot of use cases that some for some entrepreneurs on one side of automation, getting that or other side, building that uh, use cases are very important to get to, to get their thinking around to wrap their minds around what, what actually bots can do. And uh, automation is so universal thing and you can do everything. That's a disadvantage of automation. <laughs> you need to be more specific sometimes to start thinking about what you can do as an entrepreneur in space. Um, there's my email, Dimitri at electronic.com. I would be happy to, to connect as well. And um, what else? I actually come into this show, I thought about, we really started to work together around maybe 13, 14 months ago, I think. And mm -hmm. amazing. We were a company of only, I think, around 45 employees at the time. Very brave, very hungry. Now we have 165 in all countries and we are growing a lot in Latin America, in India, in the States and Canada. Um, it's very fascinating, still very brave and hungry. It would be very interesting to check in a year um, mm. around Thanksgiving time. What, it, what, how does it look like and mm -hmm. where are we heading? But as you said before, our commitment to the success of entrepreneurs who work with us yeah. will remain the same. That, that's the lone star that guides us. Awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, that, 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 that means this time next year, we're going to have you back on the podcast. 
Yeah. And watch me one, what we said right here, figure out where we're at at that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's going to be fun to do. Sounds good. Bitch, you, man. Thanks for being on the show. Electronic Robotics, check them out, look them up. And listen, uh, don't repeat, automate, okay? There's no reason to be doing repetitive work, ladies and gentlemen. We have digital employees that have come to save the day. Let your day be saved. Gentlemen, great show. Ladies and gentlemen, take care. Until next time. Thank you.